What's up everybody and welcome back to another video on SAT math from the Scalar Learning Channel. And this video today is so important and by the way it goes counterculture to what everybody tells you about the SAT math section. This video is not about how the College Board tries to trick you on the SAT math. To the contrary, it's how the College Board tries to actually help you. When you dive deep into the material on the SAT math section, you'll see that there's all of these really amazing embedded tricks and short that you can use once you get really familiar with the format of the SAT math section. Today, I'm gonna jump through a sample set of questions from the two most recent publicly available SATs from May 2021 SAT, both US and international. Let's do it. In this first question, it says 2x plus 4 equals 100. What is the value of 6x plus 12? Now, the place where you can lean on your knowledge of the SAT math section in particular is when they ask something like this. They're not asking for x, they're asking for the value of 6x plus 12. A lot of you might think, hey, well, I wish they would ask for x, this is a trick. To the contrary, this actually makes the problem easier if you catch that because when you look at this side, you recognize that all you gotta do to make this equal 6x plus 12 is multiply multiply everything by three. So then when you multiply the left side by three, you get six X plus 12, and then likewise, multiply the right side by three, which gives you 300. You don't need to solve for X, you don't need to plug back in, 300, one, and done. In this next question, we have something similar as the last, once again, they're asking for the value of six N, meaning, don't spend your time trying to get n, we can just solve for 6n. So first I'm gonna subtract 2n from both sides and I get 12 equals 26 minus two is 24n. Now, again, we can divide by 24 and solve for n. Instead, I'm gonna divide both sides by four and that's gonna give me three equals 6n, boom, done. This problem, the question is, what is the x-intercept of the graph of 8x plus 6y equals 24 in the xy plane? First of all, the way the College Board is trying to help you here is if you look at the answer choices, every single choice has zero for the y value. That's no coincidence because x-intercepts always have zero as the y value, but it's really nice that they gave it to you right there in the answer choices. So what you can do here, even if you forget maybe what's an x-intercept, all that, all you gotta do is plug in zero for y, because they all have zero, and you'll see it becomes eight x equals 24, x therefore equals three, a is the winner, boom, done. The hints the College Board gives you on these systems of equations is truly special because if you spot them, it can save you so much time. So what are they asking? They're asking you, again, the value of 10x minus y. Not the value of x, not the value of y, but that special expression, 10x minus y. So when you see something like this, you really gotta pause and look. You don't even have to manipulate the equations whatsoever. Just add them straight up. 5x plus 5x gives you 10x. 3y plus negative 4y gives you negative y. And then on the right side, 31 plus 17 gives you 48. They want the value of 10x minus y. You got it right there and you're done. This problem is similar to the last one and the same trick can be utilized. So again, they want 3a plus 3b. What am I gonna do? I'm simply going to add these guys up as is because if I add 2a and a, I get 3a. B and 2b, I get 3b. So if I add them up, I get 3a plus 3b equals 36, my answer is D, and we're done. Now in this one, your natural instinct might be to factor and solve, and that's all good, you can totally do that. But the College Board loves to ask about the sum of solutions to quadratic equations. And the way they're trying to help you here is since they ask so routinely about this, there's actually a shortcut that you can use to solve this very quickly. That shortcut is that the sum of the solutions is simply negative B over A. Well, what are my A, B, and C values? Right there. So my B value is negative six, negative B therefore would be positive six over A, which is one, and we get our answer of six. In this one, the question is that a potter is selling vases. The function P gives the total profit in dollars the potter will receive if the vases are sold at the price of X dollars each. The graph of Y equals P of X is shown. What equation represents the relationship between the price of one vase and the profit? Okay, what are they really asking here? They're asking you to find the equation of this parabola that's facing down. Now, if you know vertex form, they've really made it very clear for you as to what the correct answer is. So all you gotta do is listen to the College Board and learn vertex form. And if you know that, you're good to go. Vertex form is extremely helpful here because they give you the vertex. So what is vertex form? Y equals 
a times x minus h squared plus k. And what is h and k? That is the vertex. So since I know that, and I don't have to worry so much about the a value because they all have the same a value, the h value is gonna be that 18, and the k value is gonna be that 1536. So which one gives me that right balance? B is the only one with x minus 18, the x value of the vertex, and plus 1536, the y value of the vertex, boom, done. In this question, it says the rectangular mirror shown above has width of three and length of five feet and is surrounded by a mosaic border with a width of x feet. If the area of the mirror and the border is 35 square feet, what is the width x in feet of the border? So if we mark this up as they describe, that is three and that is five. And we're trying to find the width x of the border based on what they've given us. They're also telling us that this entire shape, including the border and the inside portion, has an area of 35. Now, the inside part, you can quickly say, has an area of 15, great. The standard way to solve this would be to show an expression for the top portion coming all the way across, which would be three plus two x, and then an expression for this side coming down, which would be five plus two x, right? Because we're adding in the x here and here, and likewise, we did that with the three here and here. Then what we would do is set this guy equal to 35 and solve like a normal quadratic. But the thing that the College Board did here is they made it nice and simple because they gave us an area of 35. Now, and if we're banking on the fact that these values are whole numbers, there's only two real numbers that multiply to 35 other than one and 35, and that's five and seven. And look how nice this fits in. This one could be five and this one could be seven so long as the value of x is one. This is again, not the college word trying to trick you but really trying to help you if we think it through. You can see that shortcut, you're gonna nail it instantly. Isolating quantities is one of the places where the college word really is gonna try and help you because if you glance at the answers and you know you're starting with the formula, you don't even need to read any of this. All you're trying to do is isolate A. So watch this, I say KA. First, I'm going to subtract N, B from both sides then I'm going to divide K. And look, I don't even need to read because I know from the answer choices we're trying to isolate A. Cancel that out, A equals 10 minus NB over K, boom, done. This one says a speed of 60 meters per second is equivalent to Z meters per minute. What is the value of Z? The reason why I point this one out is the College Board doesn't have to do this. They don't have to underline the fact that they're changing the units from second to minute, but they do because they're trying to help you see that difference and make the correct calculation. Since we know that there's 60 seconds in one minute, all I gotta do is multiply this guy by 60 to get it into the appropriate time unit. 60 times 60 is 3600, and that's it. Next, we get to this one. It says the box plots above show the distributions of two data sets. Which of the following statements must be true? Here's why the College Board is trying to help you. As they continually test on box and whisker plots, they really just want you to get to know the five key points. This is the min, this is the max, this is the lower quartile, this is tested less often, and the upper quartile. But most importantly, the center line here is called the median. That's all they're testing on. So you can quickly see that D has to be the right answer because it's the only one that says the median of data set A is greater than the median of data set B. In this one, it says in triangle ABC, the measure of angle C is 90. If sine of A equals 3 fifths, what is cosine of B? Again, normally you might wanna draw a triangle out, really calculate, cosine of B according to the side lengths that you choose, but you don't have to. And this is where the College Board is trying to help you. They always test this concept, and here's the answer. Sine of an angle equals cosine of its complement. Since these guys are the non-right angles in a right triangle, A and B must be complements. Therefore, cosine of B is also 3 fifths. Boom, done. In this one, it says in the XY plane, the points negative 3, 10, and 3, 10 are endpoints of the diameter of a circle. Which equation represents the circle? Now, the way the College Board is trying to help you here is again, just know the formula. It's X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals radius squared. Now, if we look carefully, where is the center? Well, it's right in between the diameter. So if it's at negative 310 and 310, my center is gonna be zero. 10. Guess what? We don't have to do much more work than that because the only one where the x is minusing zero, aka it's just x squared, is a. We don't even have to calculate the radius even though it has to be three. 
and we're done. Last but not least, in this problem, we're ending with another circle equation problem. It says in the xy plane, the graph of the given equation is a circle. Which point xy lies on the circle? Now, with this one is great because even though it looks difficult, all you got to do is plug and chug and see which one gives you a true equation. The only one that works is b because three plus three is six squared. Negative one minus seven is negative eight squared. That becomes 36 plus 64 equals 100 and we're done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please click that like button. And if you wanna see more videos from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.